That is not the case. But you see, it goes right to the heart of our believing. And we have a whole lot of disillusioned, disappointed people because we never taught them that it's by forcing in that you obtain the kingdom. Not the easy route. You don't drift into it. Oh, I got healed, so I'm in the kingdom. God graciously may heal you, and that's good news. And he's still about doing that. But that's not the issue. Whether I get physically healed or not, it's nothing to do with my standing with God. It's who I am and what I'm prepared to do and press into God. You see, great music will attract people. But discos are filled too, aren't they? There are opportunities for fellowship and interaction meets people's needs. That's great. Crowds attract crowds. Numbers can mean influence. But that's not the key. The key is what's happening in our lives, in our hearts. What is God doing? How much are we kingdom people as being those who just drift along with the world? See, our message of the provisions of the kingdom come through living the kingdom way. Jesus said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom of heaven is come to you. Every miraculous manifestation is an evidence of the kingdom. But you know, that can get a bit messy at times when you start dealing with demons. And uh, we want to be fairly respectable. But it goes back to the right heart of the gospel. I'm not looking for demons. But if they come along, I'll deal with it. I'm not hunting for them. But if they manifest themselves, we've got authority in the name of Jesus. In my name, you will cast out demons. And we saw much of that in the early days of our ministry. But you see, the world tolerates traditional religion. They don't mind if you're not disturbing them. But you see, real Christianity does disturb the world. It churns them up a bit. Now, I think it's marvellous when the church gets accepted by the community and all the rest of it, but there will be times when you're going to be at loggerheads with the community. Because there's only one way to God. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not easy to proclaim in a multi-religious, multicultural society. A few years ago, I met a man when I was on a visit back to New Zealand. And he said to me, 25 years ago, my wife and I came to one of your meetings. And as we left, my wife said, I'm not going back there, that man is mad. Well, he said, we did come back the next night. And my wife got healed, and I got rapturously filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. The man's mad. You know, in the early days of our meetings, many people came and said, never come back here again. But they came back the next week. You know, it shocked their system, but something was, was happening. Simple, childlike faith gets you into the kingdom. Praise God. But persistent, aggressive faith enables you to receive the full benefits of the kingdom. How desperate are you? When I was in high school as a teenager, in my third year, I got the responsibility of ringing the bell for the recesses and the changes of, of classes and so forth. They recognized I was a good timekeeper. So I got the job. Now, from time to time, I would go home for lunch. And to do that, I had to get down to where the trams left, where we were traveled by tram, to get out to the suburb where I lived. I rang the bell at 12.30. Down in town, quite some distance away, the high school was up on the hill. I had to go down the hill, round through some city streets, into this area where the trams left from, and catch the tram, which left at 25 minutes to one. Five minutes to go. I'd be up there pulling the rope, boom, 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 and I was off. Down on the hill and round the street on the air of the tram, sitting there waiting to start. If I was delayed, occasionally the tram took off before I got there. This was in the days when life was fun. We didn't have safety and health regulations and things like that. And uh, a bit of excitement. And I would take off after the moving tram. It was on its way rambling along like that. And here am I, I could run faster in those days. And I'm moving along, excited, and I'm getting closer. And the conductor's up there, come on, come on, come on. He wants to stay out there. And I'd get hold of the rail, I'd be running, and then leap up onto the running board. Good on you, son, good on you. Nobody made a fuss. Goodness, life was real in those days, wasn't it? 
Now you can't even clean a window without three weeks of instruction. <laughs> Good on you. Give me a clap. I'm an old timer. Bit of a redneck, I suppose, or something. But you see, I had to put some effort into it. I ran after it. I jumped onto the thing. I was not going to miss out. It was another ten minutes. I would miss my lunch hour. See, how desperate are we? Do we really believe that the kingdom will provide what we need? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Jesus said, and all things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. Don't know about that. Now, that's not an excuse for doing nothing. We need to have to realize that there's activity by us as well. You see, apart from enjoying the, the wonderful praise and worship and freedom and fellowship of our churches, we need to realize the Bible talks about taking up our cross, dying to self. Don't hear too much about the cross these days. But, you know, it's a heart. We've heard about it this morning. Wonderful. From your pastor. See, dying to self allows us to live unto God. If I'm living unto myself all the time, then I can't truly live unto God. And so often I think we're afraid to preach these things in case we're considered old-fashioned. You know, we're not contemporary and relevant anymore. One man said to me a few years ago, I don't want any grey-haired preachers on my platform. Glad to say his hair is now grey. <laughs> you know, it's one of those inevitable things. You know, the Bible says you're allowed to colour your hair. Did you know that? Paul said, I die daily. So, I haven't got any. I just have a cut and a polish now. I haven't got any hair to do. Uh, you know from my joke book that once I had the wave, now I've only got the beach. But you know, every supernatural event is an evidence of the kingdom. The kingdom is supernatural in its content. We don't, we don't live in the supernatural. We live in the ordinary, the normal things. But every so often, there's a supernatural touch and we need that. Now, I'm a grace preacher. I believe in the grace of God. Everything that we need for the outworking of God's plan in our lives is available free by the grace of God. But Paul said this, I did not receive the grace of God in vain. I worked harder than all of you, but not I, but Christ who was in me. What a fantastic balance. I did not receive the grace of God in vain. In other words, I received from Christ everything I needed for the outworking of God's plan and will. But I didn't sit back and say, oh, isn't that wonderful? Got all these grace provisions. Paul said, oh, I worked. I took hold of that grace and I worked harder than all of you. But it wasn't just my energy. It was Christ working in me. You see, you've got to get the balance in Scripture. Desperate men and women tap into God's grace. But if I fail to teach both the provisions and responsibilities of the kingdom, I've only given you half a message. I've brought you to life. I've given you a relationship with God. But you're going to be an eternal baby. You've got to go on from there. Paul said, I want to press on. I want the life of Christ to be manifested in me. We, we need to have some zeal about our Christianity about our faith. You know, the Bible says a lot about zeal, both zeal in opposition and zeal in support. You watch TV sometimes and the people who are opposed to things have more zeal than the people are for it. In Acts 22, verses 3 to 5, the Apostle Paul giving his testimony said, I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. He's talking to the religious leaders. I persecuted the followers of this way to their death. Paul said, oh, I was zealous of getting rid of this new kind of movement that was encroaching upon our Judaism. But then his zeal turned to support. Man, he had a zeal for the kingdom. 